All right. Hey, uh, thank you guys very much for coming out today. Um, my name is Dave Sarain. Uh, I'm giving this talk on automating PKI management uh, using DogTag 10.2. Um, we're going to talk a bit about, um, oh, sorry. Awesome town. Just got the slideshow. There we go. All right, so here we go. Uh, so um, I, again, my name is Dave Sarine. Uh, I happen to work uh, for Red Hat, um, uh, but I am here uh, to talk about a project that uh, I, I have uh, quite a bit of fondness of, of dog tag, uh, which is our P, uh, PKI product uh, in Fedora. Um, so a little bit about me again, you know, I work for Red Hat. Um, I'm something of a baker. Uh, that was my original career choice is I wanted to be a, a chef or a baker, but uh, nights, weekends, holidays, yeah, I kind of liked having those off. So, um, you know, pies, pies, cookies, cakes, breads. I love making those. I'm also a gardener. Um, that's my uh, uh, black and tan coon hound snipping out some azaleas right there. Um, and I'm also, uh, I also enjoy rugby, uh, used to play, play a little bit still, um, and go Glasgow. They just, uh, won the pro 12. So happy day. Um, so uh, what the, the, just to kind of set some expectations here in the beginning, uh, what this is, this is a brief introduction into PKI and dog tag. Um, it's an overview of the API and CLI interfaces, um, that are relatively new in dog tag. Um, they, they are tools that are going to help you uh, with being able to facilitate your certificate lifecycle management and uh, you know, profile management and things like that um, in your PKI environment. Um, and you know, some practical examples. You know, I'm, I'm throwing a couple up there. Uh, I could spend all day going through examples of things that you can do in dog tag. Um, but today we're primarily going to focus on the CA. Um, so what this is not, uh, this is not specifics on how to encrypt and decrypt things. Um, uh, this is also uh, not uh, OS specific crypto implementations. So, you know, this is just kind of, again, very generalistic uh, uh, approach. Um, you know, you, you'll take the information you get today and run with it, um, do with it as you wish. And uh, lastly, this is a conversation, right? I don't want to stand here and talk at you guys for an hour. Um, you know, it's Sunday, it's after lunch, <laughs> everybody's tired. So, you know, please feel free to engage me. You know, if you have any questions, um, you know, if, if you think I'm wrong, please, you know, throw stuff at me. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to engage. So, um, brief introduction into PKI, right? So, hey, Google, please define PKI for me. Uh, PKI, Public Key Infrastructure, is a set of hardware, software, people, policies, and procedures needed to create, manage, distribute, use, store, and revoke digital certificates and manage public key encryption. It's kind of a mouthful, huh? Um, but if you think about it, it's, it's really a part of that uh, holistic identity management procedure and policy that you guys are going to be using, right? Um, it, that's part of the who you are uh, in, in the identity realm, right? So is, is, is everybody in here pretty familiar with what PKI is and what, it, what it's meant to be? Anybody have any questions on that? Awesome. All right, so why? Uh, you, know, you need a trusted environment for certificate creation and usage and, and also for your keys, right? Um, you, you don't want to be just willy-nilly using OpenSSL uh, to be generating thousands of certs you know, on an individual box, and each box is its own CA, right? That, that's un, unmanageable, right? right? Uh, I see some, I see some smiles in the audience. I, we, we've all been there, right? We've all been there, where you, where you've had to create certs and keys using OpenSSL. It's a pain, um, and it, you need it centrally managed, right? Uh, again, you, you want to have that one area of focus to, to manage these, these resources right um so you know throw a little comic up there just for fun you know just to drive home the point of of needing a trust it's like hey i got home from a party you know talking in you know just say what, what did you do did you do anything bad did, you know i signed her public key oh no right so how does this affect me um so you're using it every day, right? You're using certificates and keys every day. You know, things like X509, it's everywhere, right? 
you know, you have your, your, you know, browser SSL sessions, there's certificates there that need to be managed, right, uh, to encrypt those tunnels, VPNs, mail, SMIME, you know, things like that. And, and on your network stack, you know, if you're using IP, IPsec, you know, things like that, those are encrypted tunnels, those are encrypted connections, everything needs a certificate, and or a key, right? How do you manage that, right? So, and as I said earlier, you know, try managing 1000s of these certs that you need, using OpenSSL. It's just, it, it's simply not tenable. Encrypt all the things. Uh, so an introduction to dog tag. Uh, so dog tag is, is really an enterprise class open source CA uh, that provides, you know, issuance, revocation, and retrieval of your certificates, your keys, etc. cetera. Um, it, it provides your certificate revocation list. So, you know, when you revoke a cert, it goes on a certificate revocation list. That CRL then gets referenced by whatever's doing the authentication to make sure, hey, is this cert valid? Is this cert good? Has this cert been revoked? Why has this cert been revoked, right? The CRL is there for that. Um, certificate profiles. Uh, I'm going to get into certificate profiles a little bit later. Um, and, and you'll find that, uh, you know, I will say quite often, this is the most important thing that I'm going to say. And it's everything I'm going to say, right? So certificate profiles is, is, is important, and I'll get into that a little bit later. So, and uh, as kept. So SEEP is, is for um, provisioning certs for things like uh, uh, routers and, and things like that. So uh, key archival, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the KRA uh, from, from dog tag. So this is where your, uh, your, your keys are gonna be archived. So if in the event you need to uh, recover them or uh, regenerate any sort of material that was generated using those keys, you have it there. It's stored and it's securely stored. Um, OCSP. OCSP uh, stands for Online Certificate Status Protocol. And um, that's a protocol that's used to also check, you know, for cert status and things like that. Um, so instead of having a CRL on every machine, you can just ping back to this OCSP responder and say, hey, please check, check this for me. Um, it also provides smart card management. Um, so if you if you wanted to use a token, you know, a smart card to for authentication or for anything, right? It, you know, it has it has uh, functionality built in for that um, through the uh, TKS and TPS, uh, which is the token key uh, subsystem and the token provisioning subsystem. Uh, those are used in conjunction. Um, again, uh, I'm not going to get into that too much because I want to focus on what most people are going to be pretty interested in, which would be the CA uh, portion of this. Uh, so in the latest build is uh, 10.2.4 on Fedora 22. Um, I do not believe we have ported it to Debian yet, um, but it does work on CentOS uh, as well. So. Um, you know there is that, um, but I I'll have to double check. I don't I don't think we've ported it to Debian yet, um, but I know Free IPA, uh, which uh, the CA uh, portion of Dog Tag is built into Free IPA, that I believe has been ported to Debian. Uh, Free IPA. Hmm. I'll have to I'll have to look at that. But I thought I thought Free IPA had been ported to Debian, but I'll 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 verify that. So, um, you know, we'll get it. I'll show you a little bit here uh, what the web UI looks like uh, for dog tag. Um, again, this is going to be a real quick, real quick overview. I'm not going to show you a whole lot of detail here because um, I want to focus on the API and the CLI, uh, you know, for, for the automated portion of it. Um, but I wanted to give you an idea of what the uh, web UI looks like and, and what you'd have to do with the web UI as compared to. So here's your uh, end, end entity. This is where your, your RAs, um, your, your, your admins would go in to enroll new certs, right? Um, if, you look, uh, if you look right here, uh, certificate profile names, those are all, the, these are all default profiles. They, they keep going. There's, there's a list of, I think, uh, 12 or 18 of them. Um, for for certificate generation and and those are the profiles that you're going to use to to create the cert so the profile knows what kinds of certs you want to create right um and mostly i talk about the manual uh the manual uh user dual use sort certif of certif uh, certificate the enrollment um because that's what most people are going to do there and they're also going to do some ssl cert generation which is down down the list a little bit but 
Um, so here's uh, the revocation page. So let me go. Let me go back one slide here. So when and I should have put a I should have put a screenshot in for this, but it, when you click when you click on this link right here, uh, like like this manual uh, user dual use certificate enrollment profile, it will pop up a page that has a bunch of um, fields that you can fill in, and it's fields that are are like the the name, the you know the the SN, the O, the OU. Uh, you know, objects like that, if you're familiar with LDAP, right? Um, you know, so you can put in the identifiable information for the user. Um, and then you click enroll and it will generate a, a, an enrollment request. Um, so again, here's the revocation. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to search for a, uh, a certificate uh, serial number that you want to revoke or a range of serial numbers that you want to revoke. And then you're going to specify a reason why it's being revoked. Uh, this is important uh, because you want to make sure you track, you, you know, why these things are, are happening, right? You, you don't want you don't want to just have a revoked cert laying around and be like, well, why, right? Uh, currently, uh, unspecified is the default. Uh, that's as general as it gets. But you know, if you want if you want to know that you know the key was compromised for for this revocation, or you want to know that. You know, oh, we're just revoking because it's superseded by a new cert. You know, this user got, per, you know, provisioned a new cert because, you know, what, whatever, right? Um, you know, there's also a reason in here for like, um, you know, ch you know, changed, uh, essentially, it's like change, change jobs, change responsibilities, right? So, and here's the screen for retrieval. So this is where you're going to go to retrieve, say, your. Um, your CA root certs, your or user certs, even you you'd come in here and say, you know, I'm going to search for, um, you know, Joe Bob, or I'm going to search for certificate serial number this, and you can retrieve that, and it'll it, it'll give you the option to save that in in several different uh, kinds of format, right? I, I believe it's uh, you could get it uh, dir encoded, um, or you can get it in a uh, P12, <coughs> uh, PCS12 uh, file. So. Um, and that's a duplicate side. I apologize. Uh, so here's the agent services. Agent services are uh, the resources that are sp specifically for your your upper upper level admins. This is where you're going to be if you ha if you're provisioning certificates that require um, somebody to authorize that enrollment, right? Uh, to approve that enrollment. This is where they're going to approve that enrollment. Um, you know, so what they would do is they would go on the on the left here. You'll you'll see, uh, uh, yeah, it's it, I believe it's a search for a list request or search for requests, right? Uh, so um, that's where that's where you're going to go. You're gonna you're gonna search for that request because each when you go to enroll a cert, it's going to give you a request number. You're gonna search for that request number and you're gonna either approve or deny it, right? And then you get to associate a user with that approval. So, you know, if you're doing auditing and you go back and you say, well, why did this person get this certificate provision for them? Well, who authorized that? Well, this person approved it. Let's go to them and talk to them, right? Um, that's a, a hugely important in the auditing piece of, of your PKI environment, right? Because you want to make sure that you know exactly why things are being done and what's being done. <clears throat> Does anybody have any question about the, uh, those previous slides? Um, yes. The free IPA is in unstable. Is in unstable. Uh, Debian. Thank you very much. Uh, so to repeat that, um, you know, a gentleman in the audience here uh, did a quick search and and verified that uh, free IPA is in Debian, but it's in the unstable version. Of Same for dog tag. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, yeah, because because free IPA uses uh, the uh, CA and KRA from uh, from dog tag uh, built in. So yes. That is a fantastic question. So the question was, uh, is dog tag only for an internal CA, right? No, it's not. You can set up dog tag as a subordinate CA of whatever, right? So if you have VeriSign and you have a deal with VeriSign where you can set up a subordinate CA, you can get that, you can get a root signing cert from VeriSign and
so uh, the uh, to repeat that question um, is you so let me try and rephrase that question so you're you're creating the certs and certificate requests from say VeriSign or or Entrust or somebody like that or some So, but they, so that's that's why that's why I'm saying if, if depending on your 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 deal with VeriSign, I mean yes, because you have all that material there, right? You have the CSR uh, available to you, so you could just copy and paste that into whatever VeriSign uses to to generate the certs. Um, and I believe I, I'd have to go back and look, but I believe you can use a previously provisioned certificate for an entry in dog tag right you can add that to add that to an entry but i'd have to i'd have to verify that i haven't touched that in a while um but but the way ca chaining the way trust chaining works right is if you can use if if verisign signs your ca root cert as a trusted root cert then it's part of that trust chain right so it's it's let me be very careful when I say this. It, it's almost as if VeriSign signed it, right? Because you don't need, you know, Bob's Discount Chicken and Waffles Root CA in on all your machines because you have Entrust's trust it, on all your machines, right? Because it's part of the, the the trust chain. You should be good to go. That's correct. That's that's correct. So, um, any other questions? Yes. Yes, we do support hardware security modules. Um, currently, we support uh, um, Net uh, Insipher Net HSM, and I believe we also support Luna HSM. Uh, so, yes, uh, to answer your question, we do support uh, hardware security modules. That's a great question. You know what you're talking about. I like that. That's that's perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I knew it was relatively recent, but I, I, I was starting to question my sanity for a second when, when you were like, well, are you sure? And I'm like, I thought I was. Um, well, th thank you very much for... Okay, and and can you can, can you repeat can you repeat what what versions it's in again? It's in Wiley and. Okay, so so it's in it's in Wiley and Vivid uh, as well. Um, I appreciate you uh, looking that up. Nice, great, perfect, awesome. All right, so um, we'll move on to talk a little bit about the command line and and the API. So this is really nice because it can be run uh, from a client or on the server. Uh, it, it, management options, basically anything that you can do through the web UI, you can do through the API uh, and or the API, uh, the API or the CLI, right? Um, uh, which is great. So some, some options include, you know, certificate management, you know, we just talked about, you know, enrollment and revocation. Um, you can put certificates on hold for whatever reason, right? Um, uh, you, you can do profile management, uh, which again, I'll get into in a little bit. Uh, user and group management. So, if you want, if you want to have people to be able to do certain tasks within uh, within uh, dog tag, you can set that up, right? Um, you can provision users and groups that way. Uh, and uh, subsystem management. And when I say subsystem, I mean you know the CA, the the KRA, uh, OCSP, um, and TPS and TKS. Um, some authentication options. Uh, you you can either do basic authentication uh, back to back to the dog tag server, which would be a username username and password. Um, I highly recommend against it. Uh, it, it. I mean, it's great, it's easy, but I I I recommend and I I personally use the second option, which is the client certificate option. Um, when you create a subsystem, it automatically generates you an admin cert uh, and you would bring that over to your client box and install it into say NSS or create a PEM file that sits on your, uh, sits on your machine that you can reference to do these, do these types of uh, operations. 
Um, so for, uh, for my examples that I'm going to give a little bit later on, uh, for uh, the command line, I use, uh, I, I use NS, an NSS database. I point it to an NSS database. Um, and for uh, the API, I, do, I have a PEM file sitting on my machine. Uh, mostly because I'm not that familiar with Python and accessing an NSS database with Python, right? So if I if I was better at doing that, I would have made a better example. But you know, I'm sticking with uh, just a PEM file. Uh, so uh, before you begin, uh, you need to make sure that you have two packages installed on your box. You need uh, PKI tools and PKI base. Um, this is going to provide you with the command line utility and the uh, the Python libraries, uh, the libraries that you're going to need to be able to write your write your APIs, uh, uh, your your uh, scripts, right? Um, and I believe you can also write write scripts uh, to leverage the API using Java as well. Um, but uh, again, I'm more familiar with Python, so everything you're going to see is Python. So you know, please bear with me. Um, yeah, you know, so but you know, whatever works for you, right? Uh, so. Uh, an, an example here is, you know, because I do client, I do uh, client-based uh, authentication. I import the certificate into an NSS database. I SCP it over from uh, the dog tag server to my local box, and then I do P, uh, PK12 util to install that P12 into the NSS database. Um, so, uh, does anybody have any questions on that? Um, I mean, it's it, it's literally two commands. Uh, it should be pretty quick and pretty straightforward. But um, you know, there's other ways that you can go about you know getting your certs to where you can use them. So, uh, first contact, establish your connection. This is the first step in any anything that you're going to do with the CLI or your uh, your API, right? Um, so, from the command line, you're going to do PKI, which is the uh, the the, com the base command, right? Um, and you're going to point it again. In, in my examples, I use client certi certificate uh, certificate uh, authentication. So I pass it a dash D, point it to where the NSS database is. Uh, dash C, that's a password. Um, you, there are two other options here where you can have it either prompt you for the password, or you can point it to a file that contains the password. Um, so if you're concerned about having your password in your command history, you could, there are options there, right? Um, and that that password is just to unlock the NSS database. So if you do, if you don't have a password on your NSS database, then I don't believe that the dash C is required. Um, dash N is the the uh, certificate nickname uh, as it's referenced in the NSS database. So when it opens up the NSS database, it needs to know what to look for. Uh, so you're going to pass it that nickname and dash H for host. So you're going to point it to what host you want to access, right? Um, so usually it's going to be, you know, whatever the host name is, fully qualified domain name, or you, like if you're doing it on the server, uh, you should be able to do local host uh, as well. Uh, any questions on that? All right. And um, the, the API example here, um, can you guys read that all right? Awesome. All right. So it, essentially you're just uh, creating a, a connection object. Uh, and you're using the pki.client.pki connection. You're saying it's an HTTPS connection to whatever the host name is uh, on port 8443, and you want to. You're using the uh, subsystem of CA, and then you are authenticating. So you're set. Uh, you're setting the authentication cert to say whenever what whenever I try and do an op an operation uh, from here from henceforth. Use this. Uh, use that cert, uh, that dot pem file you you create you created earlier. If you were to do that, um, I did not put the instructions on how to create a pem file from a p12 file, uh, but it's pretty pretty well documented out there. Uh, you know, so <clears throat> so now what? Right. So you perform all the operations. Uh, so again, you can do just about anything you can do from the web UI in the command line or the API. And, and that's, what, that's what makes it really powerful, because you can start to automate these things. You can start folding these in as part of your, your, your business workflow, right? your business logic. Uh, so you know, if you're provisioning users, you can have something kick off an automated script that would auto-enroll you know, a, a certificate for the user. Or um, key pairs, you know, if you wanted to you know, provision SSH keys using this tool as well. right? Um, if it can be done on the CLI, it can also be done with the API. 
Um, uh, I was doing a little bit of uh, extra tinkering this morning, and I may be mistaken in that, but um, it's only because the API is fairly new, and I think that there's some functionality that hasn't yet been uh, ported to the API. Um, I think like so, some of the user and group uh, management functionality isn't in the API yet, but um, the, your, your primary functions of your CA and KRA are in the API. So um, yeah, take a look at that. Uh, and today, you know, again, we'll mostly focus on CI operations. So, and again, I could book a kind of slide. I don't know what happened here. Uh, so some examples I'm going to go over today. Um, you know, we're going to query certificate profiles. We're going to enroll certificates and we're going to revoke certificates. Um, so profiles, know your profiles. Okay. Um, I've been using this, uh, this example lately, right? Um, for for profiles and, and you know who here is looking into or currently actively using something along the lines of devops and i'm going to do jazz hands for devops because i i got to do jazz hands right um so those of you who aren't familiar with devops it's you know to really boil it down and do it no justice at all it, it's essentially you know computing on demand and it's it's putting a lot of power back into like a, a developer's hands you know you're taking operations out of the mix in a lot of the a lot of these cases like if you're you have developers working on a project and they need to rapid deploy test systems right you know historically speaking either you've given them the keys to the kingdom or you've had to engage operations and it's like three weeks later you finally have a vm that the developers really only need for a week right um so now with with various other tooling Developers can have access to, you know, the ability to just click a button and bam, they've got an instance set up and that instance is only going to live for a week, right? Well, let's say they're working on a new project and they need to get some certificates issued for whatever secure connections that, that they've got going on, right? You can set up custom certificate profiles for those developers that say, well, okay, this certificate is only is going to have a start date of whatever today's date is and it's going to have an end date of seven days from today right so now when they're done doing their testing you don't have to revoke a cert and have it sit on your crl for two years or three years or whatever your default you know lifespan is for a certificate they will expire and drop off the crl if you had to revoke it prior to its uh, expiry date um so this helps keep your crl clean and it helps it keep it, it helps keep it efficient right um, and there's really no limit to the amount of, of profiles you can you can generate. Um, and to give you a little bit of a little bit more information on profiles, because I think this is very important, is a profile consists of all of the information you need to provide for that certificate to do what it needs to do. So, like for an identity cert, for instance, you're going to have a CN, uh, you know, your your canonical name, which is going to consist of the SN, the Oh, the the object, the OUs, right? Um, the you know all of all of that information to make that certificate identifiable to you. And then what can this cert do? You know, is it is it used for non repudiation? Is it used for encryption? Is it used for signing? You know, what you know what kind of keys are we going to use for this? Right. So um, that all of that information is stored in that certificate profile. So if you have a ton of different use cases, you can have a ton of different profiles and use those profiles to your advantage. So you're not generating just these kind of standard certs and shoehorning them into, into use cases that they're not really well suited for. You can really tailor that, right? Um, does anybody have any questions on that? Awesome. Uh, so, and, and you know, what can you do with profiles through the API and the CLI? Well, you can find profiles, you can show profiles, you can show the details of a profile, you can add a profile, you can modify a profile, you can delete a profile, you can enable a profile or you can disable a profile, right? And, and this, again, this helps you with, your, with that workflow, right? It, it makes it pretty easy to go in and say, oh, hey, you know, on the fly, I want to copy this profile, modify it, and then re-add it uh, as a different, you know, with a different profile name because I have a slightly different use case, right? So, so it, makes it, it makes it a little bit easier to programmatically get that done instead of having to either go, uh, all the profiles are kept in a .cfg file, uh, by the way, um, in dog tag. Uh, but it, instead of having to go in and manually modify those profile uh, configuration files or 
um, go through the web interface and, and go in, okay, let me try and get this done through this. You can create a, a script or your own kind of interface for your, for your admins to quickly and easily go in and make, that, make these changes. So um, a, a quick example here, you know, I, I'm, just, I'm just throwing an example up here on how to show, uh, show a profile. So again, you see it's kind of busy. I know, I apologize, but you know, again, you, I'm saying PKI-D, pointing it to the NSS database, giving it the password to unlock the database, telling, telling it which um, cert NIC I want to use for the authentication, and then I do a CA profile show and give it a profile ID. What that's going to do is that's going to show me all the information in that uh, in that profile, that certificate profile, right? So if you were curious about, hey, you know, what is this, what does this profile do? And again, you can wrap your own you know, wrapper around the CLI. And, and again, this is where it becomes flexible, right? Because you can just say, I'm going to pass these three, you know, command line options to the shell script. And then the shell script is going to kick this off with what you're looking for, what you're trying to accomplish, right? And uh, from the API, it's just about as easy, right? So uh, you're setting up the connection. Um, and then you just set your CA profile equals, uh, you know, client underscore profile dot get underscore profile. And then you pass it uh, your profile ID. In this case, I used uh, CA user cert. So it's going to give me um, what that profile is. So the next, uh, next piece that you're going to want to know how to do is certificate management. Uh, and the reason why I do profiles first is because it directly affects your certificate management. Um, because when you go to enroll uh, a cert, you want to give it a, a profile that is going to be used to generate the cert. Um, some of the options you have available here, um, these, are all, these are all pulled directly from the man page for, for the CLI. So it's, the, the man pages are awesome. Um, great sources of information. Uh, so, you know, some of the, you can, you can find uh, a, a certificate. So if you want, if you want to search for a certificate by serial number, it'll, it'll thump that out for you. You could show a certificate, um, which will, which will give you some of the data on that certificate. Uh, you can revoke a certificate. You can put a certificate on hold. You can release that hold. Um, you can, uh, you, you know, rec request profile show, which is, you're going to show those, uh, show those profiles. And I showed that earlier because it's the same, the same command line, uh, the profile find, and you can, um, you know, request, uh, a, a request submit, which is an enrollment request. And then you could do a request review, uh, which is you're reviewing that request. Um, and then you can also, uh, accept that, uh, that request or you can reject that request. Um, so here's how you do it on the command line, right? So again, you're passing it the dash D option, you know, pointing it to the NSS database, the password to unlock the NSS database. Uh, you're passing it the client certificate NIC, and then pointing it to the host, and you're saying, hey, I want to request, uh, request the cert. And you're going to pass it an XML file. And uh, you know, again, uh, in hindsight, I probably should have put an excerpt of that re of that request.xml file, because what it is is it contains uh, all of the information that gets pulled from the profile, plus the information on the user that you want to uh, submit the enrollment request for, um, and it's going to use that XML file, parse that out for to create the uh, uh, that that request. Um, and then you're, you're going to go ahead and once that's done, you're going to review that request and you're going to accept or reject that request. Uh, so from, from the API, you know, again, you're going to do a certain role and certain enrollment request. You're going to create the, uh, you're going to create the element for the request. CA user cert, that's the profile ID. So I'm going to, I want to create certs based on this, uh, based on this profile. And then you're going to give it some inputs, I'll get into the inputs in a second. Um, and then you're going to validate the enrollment request. And what this does is, uh, this is going to return that, that CSR. You're going to validate it, make sure it's okay. And then you're going to submit the request back to the CA. And then it'll either be sitting in there as a request waiting to be accepted, or it's going to auto accept depending on how you have your profile set up. And so, um, yeah, so the, the inputs, I thought I had another slide on this, but I had it in my notes. Um, so the inputs for the, uh, certificate, uh, the certificate enrollment request are things like your SN and your O and your OU and things like that that are going to make that, uh, that certificate identifiable. 
right to, to whatever whomever or whatever you're you're generating it for um, because these can be for users it can be for systems it can be for services I mean you know whatever whatever you need a certificate for you're gonna you're gonna have a profile for that um, so here's a quick revocation example uh, for the CLI you know again uh, we're going to pass it all of the uh, requisite authentication credentials. And we're gonna point it to the host uh, that, that we're, we're trying to uh, ping against. And we're gonna say uh, this serial number, so you're, uh, you're obviously gonna know the serial number that you're gonna wanna revoke. Um, you're gonna give it some comment, uh, say this is why I'm revoking it, you know, or whatever your business process requires. Um, I don't believe a comment is required in this process, but I, I personally believe you want to put a comment in there just to add extra color and context as to why the certificate's being revoked. Because again, when you want to go back through your auditing process, right, um, you want to know why things were done. You want to know when things were done, how things were done, right? Who did it, right? Um, and then you're going to give the dash dash reason. Um, and if you go back, if, if I were to go back to the original slides when I showed you the, uh, the GUI interface, you know, the web-based interface, that would be, you know, what you'd click one of those radio buttons. It's setting that that reason code right there. So you can start as you start tinkering with it with the command line and you start tinkering with the API. You can see, oh, you know, in the in the UI, this is what I'm doing here. This is the, the this is the, this is what this is how it's done in the API in the command line, right? Um, because uh, much of the terminology is the same. So, and that's another, that's another way, you know, if you're curious about how to do something using the command line, or you're curious about how to do something uh, uh, through the API, take a quick spin through the, uh, through the GUI, right? It, it perform the operation you want to perform in the API and say, okay, you know, let me, let me go back through and, and try and mimic that in the API. And you'll find that, you know, it's pretty, pretty analogous. Um, so, you know, uh, again, you know, some available reason codes for this are, you know, key compromise or the CA is compromised, right? You know, uh, heaven forbid your CA gets compromised. You have to revoke a lot of certificates, right? And this is why we give you the option to revoke a, a chunk of certificates at any given point in time. Um, so, and here's, here's an example of a quick revocation uh, on, uh, you know, using the API. So, you know, you've got the PKI client, PKI connection, you know, you're establishing your secure, your secure connection back to the server. And then you're passing it the uh, certificate ID, which would be the serial number. And then you're giving it a, uh, a revocation reason. Um, this time I just said unspecified, but you have, you know, your other options available to you. Um, and then you're passing it a comment, right? And then it's going to, it's going to create a, a post back to the, back to the web server and get that revocation done. Um, I feel like I really turned and burned through that pretty quickly. How much time do I have left? 20 minutes. Oh, man, alive. I, I thought I had more material than this. I, I apologize. Um, I, I did talk pretty quickly, too. So um, no, I, I apologize for that. Uh, so some resources, uh, you know, if you want to do a little bit more research. Uh, pki.fedoraproject.org, um, that's where DogTag lives. Um, mailing lists, PKI users at redhat.com and PKI announce at redhat.com. Um, you know, I troll PKI users quite a bit, you know, trying to answer questions uh, when they crop up. Um, not troll as in, ha, 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 you know, I'm not, I'm not uh, punking on people in there, right? Uh, uh, so uh, those are great resources. Um, you know, uh, uh, there's a link here as well. Um, you can actually read it pretty well up here. Fantastic. Um, that's, that's a link to the current implementation of the API. So if you want to go through and it's pretty well done, um, cause it associates what you're doing in the API with what's going on on the back end. Um, because the subsystems are all, they're all Java based. They all run on Tomcat and uh, I know it's right. I mean, it's, it, it, right tool for the right job right and uh but um and and each one of these operations has its own servlet on the back end and everything that you're doing from the cli everything that you're doing from the api is essentially generating either a put or a get back to the web server back to those servlets um and providing that information back to it so it does its processing on, on, on the back end 
Um, so that's a great place to look and 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 take take a look through uh, to get a little bit more familiar with how things are working. Because also, um, you know, again, uh, sp speaking very personally, it I want to know why things are happening. I want to know how they're happening, and understanding how the API and understanding how the CLI interfaces with the servlets on the back end is very important to understanding what you need to do to better manage and and better facilitate your pki environment right um because it can get messy in a hurry if you don't know what you're doing right and um yeah see i again i see some i see some nodding heads right um you know everybody's seen pki done poorly um and this and this very much helps you it gives you the tools it gives you the tools to hopefully do it well um so some other some other resources here uh, again uh freeipa.org um that's a great place to a great place to look uh again because the ca and kra are uh incorporated into free ipa um you, you know so if you're interested in that uh free ipa is actually a bit more of a featureful identity management suite right you're managing users and groups and and your your certificates and everything everything all under one all under one umbrella it's got it's got its own kerberos domain uh kerberos realm um you can manage your own dns zones in it as well um and if you're feeling particularly feisty you can set up cross realm domain trusts back to ad if you don't want to manage two separate you know sets of users and groups uh which is pretty helpful um but again you know that's 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 a great place to go look uh for for information and the last one I have on there is for uh, th uh, directory.throwerproject.org. Um, that's where 389DS is located. Uh, and I put that up there because DogTag uses 389DS as its backend database. Um, so everything you do in DogTag, and same thing goes for free IPA, is stored in an LDAP database. Uh, and that is fronted by 389DS. So, you know, if you have any question if, if, if you're trying to implement this and you're having problems with the directory server if you're having problems with L, the LDAP functionality of it go to three go to 389 ds right uh, go, go to 389 uh, dash users at redhat.com ask questions because uh, that, that's where uh, I mean you'll, you'll still get answers in PKI uh, dash users but uh, more people who are more familiar with the directory side of things will be hanging out in 389 um so just more resources to be able to get answers right i don't want to limit you i want to give you as much information and much as much uh resources as i possibly can um so yeah um I, again i apologize that was that was really quick um and uh, if you didn't catch it at the beginning of the slides my, again my name is dave sarine uh, and it's dserine at redhat.com, and you can follow me on Twitter at dserine because I am horribly imaginative when it comes to nicknames and handles. Um, oh, uh, one other resource that I forgot to put on here. If you are on IRC and you hang out in Freenode, uh, there is pound PKI and pound 389 and pound free IPA. Um, we all hang out in there as well. Uh, oh, is dog tag dash IPA? Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so, dog tag dash PKI uh, is the is the uh, free node channel for that. So, um, yet another resource. Um, users hang out in there. Developers hang out in there. People like me who have nothing better to do with my time than to answer questions hang out in there. Uh, so, you know, please use those resources as well. Um, they're they're there for you. Um, so yeah, uh, again, any questions? Oh, and on, on IRC, I'm D. Ryan as well, because again, horribly imaginative. So, all right, uh, any questions? Yes. Okay, so the qu the question was, how far down does dog tag scale? Um, you know, is it good for generating a small amount of 
uh, certificates for, say, you know, uh, PBX or uh, VPN appliance or something like that? Um, the answer is you can use Dogtag to issue one cert if you wanted to, right? Uh, I mean, there's no lower limit to, and, and, right, well, I mean, it's, it is, it, it's silly easy to set up, okay? I mean, it's it's really, it does it all for you. It does it all for you, right? So you don't have to worry about that. You just do, so so to set it, to set up a, to set up a subsystem in dog tag, you just do, a, 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 you run a command called PKI spawn, um, and you can pass it a whole bunch of options or point it to a file that has, you know, a, a, a subsystem already built out into it that'll pull all that information from, or it'll ask you for input, right? And you can just, cycle through it and say this, 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 and bang, you've got yourself a subsystem. Um, you just have to make sure the right ports are open and things like that. But to finish answering your question, I'll get to you in one second. Uh, to finish answering your question, um, you might want to take, you might want to take a look at um, uh, uh, free IPA. Free IPA might, well, no, yeah, dog tag might be less hassle than free IPA just to do some, uh, a few number of certs, um, unless you were looking to manage users and groups and things like that as well. Uh, If you were to put it on an appliance, um, yeah. Uh, so the the question was, you know, what what, what are some of the what are some of the high uh, you know high resource utilization pieces to dog tag that you might want to look at cutting back? The answer to that is it depends on your use case. It depends on what you're doing at that moment. Um, the subsystems themselves. Uh, if I fired up my laptop right now, I think. I think I have a running subsystem somewhere that I could take a look at, uh, but uh, um, they, they take up very little resources uh, until you actually use it. Um, the, what I've seen, what I've seen, what I've seen take up most resources is generating large CRLs, and we're talking like you know CRLs that are like 35, 45 megs, and, and those, those are pretty pretty large. Um, that 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 takes a lot of system resources. Uh, doing like bulk enrollments. Uh, bulk revocations uh, that takes up a lot of resources, but just issuing a cert, I mean, that's you're not looking at much of anything. Um, so, uh, depending on your use case, just tinker, right? Um, and it's all Tomcat on the back end, so you can mess with it, you know, you, you find that right mix of your heap sizes and things like that, your Java memory management. Um, yeah, your Tomcat optimization is where you're going to be looking at, right? Um, and and the other side that you might want to look at is um, on the directory server side. There's some optimizations you could probably do there um, for like cache sizes and stuff like that. But again, you're, if you're dealing with very small number of of certs, it's probably not going to matter much. <laughs> yeah, no, not on not on the DS side. Oh, you know what? I haven't looked at the minimum system requirements for dog tag simply because I, 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 I yeah, I, I use the minimum system requirements for Fedora, for Fedora to build my Fedora box, and as long as I have enough room to put my uh, to to put my certs on it, uh, right? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. Sure. Right, exactly, because IPA uses uh, bind. Um, it has it has a whole bunch of stuff running on the back end. Yeah, bind. It's right. Yeah, the free. Right, because free, free free IPA again is is it's a it's a Kerberos realm. It's domains. It's a DNS zones. It's all of this. It's all of that stuff put in one. Um, but to to help answer your question as well, um, if you find yourself running into like storage issues, right? You're running out of space. What's nice about dog tag is you can separate the DS from, from dog tag. You can run DS on a different box and run dog tag on, on another box, right? So you can slim it down even more that way.
Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And but but the 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 really the the beauty of dog tag is it can live anywhere, right? And and again, that's why we're going over the command line and the API. So you can you can hit it from anywhere, and you can set up multiple CAs, right? You can set up clone CAs where you can say, I want to issue search from this CA, I want to issue search from this CA, I want to issue search from this CA, and they they'll all give you the same search, right? So I've got another question. If I had a nickel every time I've gotten that question. So the question was, is dog tag really tied to 389? Um, the answer is yes. Um, and that's primarily because we really haven't done anything other than, right? Um, I mean, if you want to do some testing and you want to throw some code at it and say, hey, guys, I have this feature I want to commit back upstream and I've got it working with you know Oracle backend or MySQL backend, great, right? So, so I'm not a developer. I don't know. Um, it, but because everything works, it, everything works over LDAP, right? It'd have to be something that could talk LDAP, right? Um, and I don't know what the answer to that question is. Uh, so, you know, it would just have to take some testing, uh, right? I mean, I haven't tried it. Um, I know the question comes up from time to time, but there are no current plans to 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 support any other kind of database backend than 389 so currently um but yeah i get that i get that question a lot so yes yes and i i, I mentioned that so so and and um you know i'm chastising myself for not for not putting a sample of of that input in there So right, right, and and I mean again, you know this this stuff is fa fairly you know recent uh, that we've done this right, and what that XML does for you is because what you can do is you can pull you can you can get that XML from a previous request right, and now you know what fields that need to be changed and you know you can modify that on the fly programmatically right, you can just set out whatever you need to set out or do whatever uh, with that XML file and then pipe it in. Yeah, right, right, because it's all markup, right? I mean, it. Sure. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'll have to. I'll, I'll have to. I'll have to take a look because the the only thing it. The only thing I've used is an XML file, and the only thing I've seen documented on the website is XML. Now that's not to say that you can't feed it a JSON file or you can't feed it just this huge string of inputs on the command line. Um, Open a track ticket. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean I agree, and and I'm not I'm not saying that it, it can't do it. It's just I I haven't done it, so. But um, that's a good that's a good that's a good point. I you know and I agree. So, all right. Um, any any other questions? I mean, y'all still got me for what about ten more minutes? Five more minutes. Awesome. I, I was able to get it right up to the end here. Um, but does anybody anybody else have any other questions about dog tag? Rugby, baking, my dog, anything? No? Hey, you're welcome. You're welcome. And again, and, and again, yeah, and, and again, if you're gonna go, if you're gonna go tinkering, um, the documentation's pretty good uh, on, on the website, but yeah, no, 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 no. Yes, but, uh, but the, I, I, you, you didn't let me finish. The documentation's pretty good, but if you run into any issues, hop into Freenode, right? Uh, you send an email to PKI users. I mean, there's a community of people out there who, like me, have nothing better to do with my time than to answer emails on a user list, right? Um, so get, leverage it. I mean, there, there are resources there for you uh, to make it easier and to help you. So, oh, we love that. We appreciate that. So.
All right. Well, thank you all very much uh, uh, for being a great audience. I know it's a Sunday after lunch and last day and everybody's tired and ready to go home. So I hope I made PKI a little bit entertaining for you guys. Uh, no, 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 no. Am I the only am I the only one here who enjoys PKI who enjoys this stuff? Apparently. Awesome. All right. <laughs> All right, well, thank you all very much and uh, enjoy the last hour and 15 minutes of the conference. Your customers rely on your website or application. If it's slow or non-responsive, it infuriates your users and costs you money. Keeping your business critical systems humming along requires insight into what they're doing. Your system metrics tell stories, stories that can reveal performance bottlenecks, resource limitations, and other problems. But how do you keep an eye on all of your system's performance metrics in real time and record this data for later analysis? Enter Longview, the new way to see what's really going on under the hood. The Longview dashboard lets you visualize the status of all your systems, providing you with a bird's eye view of your entire fleet. You can sort by CPU, memory, swap, processes load, and network usage. Click a specific system to access its individual dashboard, then click and drag to zoom in on choke points and get more detail. Comprehensive network data, including inbound and outbound traffic, is available on the Network tab, and Disk Writes and Free Space on the Disks tab, while the Process Explorer displays usage statistics for individual processes. The System Info tab shows listening services, active connections, and available updates. Adding Longview to a system is easy. Just click the button, copy the one-line installation command, then run the command on your Linux system to complete the process. The agent will begin collecting data and sending it to Longview. Then the graphs start rolling. Use Longview to gain visibility into your servers, so when your website or app heats up, it stays up. Citrix Zen Server gives you everything you need to integrate, manage, and automate a virtual data center, all on an enterprise-class, cloud-proven virtual platform, and at a third of the cost of other solutions. But why even bother with virtualizing your server infrastructure in the first place? Well, let's say you have a traditional one-server-to-one-application architecture, but you're running out of resources and performance is suffering. Once you order new server hardware, you'll wait for delivery. Configure it, install your business application, stage and test the server, and finally, add it to your production farm. If you've been through this process before, you know it can take weeks or even months. You also know it's a manually intensive process that will burden your team every time you outgrow your current setup. With a virtual server solution, you could accomplish all of that in less than half a day. Server virtualization software separates the OS and application from the underlying server hardware. And with multiple virtual machines on a single server, you can use each of them to run different OSs and applications. This makes it possible to move your virtual machines from one piece of hardware to another whenever you want. 
to maximize utilization, simplify maintenance, or recover from a hardware failure. And without slowing down your applications or users. Clearly, server virtualization provides big benefits. And Citrix Zen Server provides even more. Since it's built on an open platform, Zen Server plays well with your existing hardware, storage systems, and IT management software, as well as with the industry's leading cloud service providers. Best of all, you can get started by downloading a fully functional, production ready version of Zen Server for free. After a 10 minute installation process, you'll see how easy it is to start virtualizing your workloads and automating your IT management processes. And when you're ready for a richer set of management tools, just upgrade to one of the premium editions of Zen Server. So whether you're interested in virtualizing servers for the first time, expanding your server virtualization footprint, or moving server workloads to the cloud, download and install Zen Server today and see how it can help you simplify your IT environment. Citrix Zen Server. Do more. Don't spend more.